Luke chapter 1. Get to my note page here. Luke chapter 1, verse 31. And there's other audio and videos that you can get from what we began from Luke 1.1 1, 1 to today. And verse 31. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. Okay. Here's a prophecy. A prophecy about a child that has not been born. The telling of the future. Genesis sixteen eleven. Genesis sixteen eleven. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child, and shall bear a son, and shall call his name Ishmael, because the Lord has heard thy affliction. Ishmael is a prophesied child, pre-named as Jesus Christ. Genesis 18.10 Genesis 18.10 And he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah thy wife shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door which was behind him. So both of Abraham's wives, Abram's wife Hagar for Ishmael, Abraham's wife Sarah for Isaac, which is also pre named before he's born, because they wanted to start laughing. We see. We see Judges 13 3. Judges 13 3. This is nothing new. And I got to tell you, as we study these, these these verses that we're looking at right now, didn't Zacharias have the same thing that Mary's getting? But Zacharias did not recall the scripture. Gabriel gave scripture accounts that Two old people were going to have a child. That is in the Jewish history. That is the Jewish foundation. Mary, you're going to about to have a baby, and you're going to his name is going to be Jesus, pre-name. And I got to conclude. I think Mary went back into the scripture. Say, hey, there was at least a couple boys in the Bible that were pre-named. Both accounts we see the Jewish history told to us, and Zacharias had the had the Old Testament. Mary were were going to temple, were going to the synagogue, and heard the scriptures. In Judges thirteen three, and the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman. And said unto her, Behold now, thou art barren. That seems to be going all the way through. And bearest not, but thou shalt conceive and bear a son. It's running all the way through. We're not done. First Kings 13.2 First Kings 13.2 We're not done. It's all over the Old Testament. And you know what? It stops at Mary. Find somewhere 
after Mary is told she's going to have a baby, where it shows up again. It don't. There are people today who are in age of years that still have children. Maybe not as old as Zacharias and Elizabeth, and definitely not as old as Abraham and Sarah, but there are still people. But there has been no proclamation by an angel after Mary to say, hey, you're going to have a baby. Even if you get that device and it turns blue or makes a plus sign or whatever, that still can lie to you. You go to the doctor and say, well, no, it's a false pregnancy. In 1 Kings 13, 2, And he cried against the altar in the word of the Lord, and said, Altar, altar, thus saith the Lord, Behold, a child shall be born unto the house of David, Joash, Josiah, by name, and upon thee shall he, oh, and here's another child. And then the Bible goes so far as to tell you, before this child's even born, Josiah, what he's going to do. That's kind of interesting. That's like me going up and saying, listen, in two years at the Montgomery uh, Street Medical Hospital on the fifth floor, the maternity room, you're going to give birth to a, a baby boy. He's going to have a birthmark on his arm. It's going to be funny looking for the rest of his life. He's going to grow up to be a medical doctor. And at the age of 35 years old, he's going to lose it all for a malpractice suit. You say you'd be foolish. Yeah, but the Bible. And I'm thinking, uh, you don't have to take this. But going by Zacharias' account and going by Mary's account, I think Mary went back to the, to the Jewish history and said, this sounds familiar. Zacharias didn't. You say, well, it doesn't say. Zacharias didn't believe the angel. And we went through all that study, go back and get the audio. This is the first encounter with Mary and the angel. We don't even know where they are. They could be in a house. They could be by a well. They could be somewhere. And boom, she believes him. Except the fact is, I'm going to have a baby, but I've never had intercourse. That has never happened. So you would think Mary would have a little suspicion in her head. I'm going to have a baby, and I have not had any intercourse with a man. Oh, and the angel says, yes, I know. Zacharias, you're going to have a baby, and you're an old, old man. Well, how long are these going to be? Man, that's the foundation of your religion, the foundation of the priesthood you're sitting in. You're not going to be able to talk for nine months, all right? Mary, God loves you. God bless you. Have a good day. i got to go. Bye. She runs down to Elizabeth's house and says, hi, how you doing? What's wrong with your husband? What's wrong with, with Uncle Zacharias? Got, cat got his tongue? <laughs> Did you ever think about that? Uncle Zacharias and whatever Mary would be to them. Here they are sitting in the same room. Looking at they both see the same angel. Zacharias can't talk, but Mary can. How about it? You ever think about that? You ever think about those things in the Bible? I do. But we're not done yet. 2 Kings 4.16. You mean there's more? You know why God put this in here? He put it all for Jesus Christ. 4.16. And he said about this season according to the time of life 
thou shalt embrace a son. And she said, Nay, my lord. It's like Sarah. Don't, don't lie to me. A great woman, a showman here. It's throughout the thing. Isaiah 9, 6. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. It is in the Bible. I think Mary, I, I don't think God just give her enough credit where the Catholics give her too much credit. This is the sixth scripture we've looked at of seven. Isaiah 9, 6. For unto us a child is born, is born, present tense. No, he's not. Unto us a son is given. The human part of Jesus Christ was born. The, the, the godly part of Jesus Christ is given. The adoption is the given. Joseph's adopting him. The birth is Mary. That tells you Jesus Christ was of God and not Joseph. And it's talked about as a prophecy, but in the present tense. Listen, this says this was written 740 B.C. 740 years plus or minus before the child's even born. For unto us a child is born. 740 years yet to go. That's a pretty long time. You want to make a prophecy who is going to be born and... and, and 2,756 if we're not in the millennium by then go ahead try that one try to give me a prophecy about a child's going to be born 740 years from now and try to tell me are we going to be still in the church age are we going to be in the tribulation period or are we going to be in the millennium try that one out Matthew 121 I tell you, when we're studying Luke, we're going to study it all as much as we can. I'm never in a rush. I want to get it all out. Now, to go with Luke 131, we have Matthew 1, verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. Six occasions we've seen it in the Bible. Nothing new. Now back to Luke one thirty one. Conceive without a male or sperm. Impossible. But we're going to see in a couple weeks that verse 37. For with God nothing shall be impossible. You know, you run that back to Genesis 18, 14 with, with Sarah. It says almost the same thing. For an old woman who can't, whose, whose womb, the Bible says, was dead. Don't worry, if God wants you to have a child, He is capable and able of giving you a child. Hannah sat at the altar, at the altar crying and, and, and crying. The womb. Jesus Christ began life as a man. As a human, as man will do with the exception of Adam and Eve. 
And yet he's called the second Adam. And Jesus had a belly button. Adam and Eve did not. Isn't that remarkable? Adam was sinless and then sinned. Jesus Christ remains sinless his entire life, entire eternity. Again, Jesus, unlike Adam and Eve, had a belly button. Now, I'm not going to get into any big discussion or anything like that, but let's look at abortion. What if Mary aborted Jesus? Where would your life be today? I'm not going to say yay. I'm not going to say nay. But I, I believe you really need to deal with a woman on the issues. And if there's no woman, if there's no woman and there's no issue, there's nothing to be thought about. If there's no woman, there's no issue. Then you know we need to worry about lost souls rather than abortion because it may never come to our life. So I may have stuck my foot in the mouth, but. So, pre-named before their birth, Ishmael, Genesis 16.11. Take that for you, King James Bible. 16.11, the child of the Arabians. Isaac, Genesis 17.19. Solomon, 1 Chronicles 22.9. Yes, Solomon was pre-named. Josiah, 1 Kings 13, 2. Cyrus, Isaiah 44, 28. John the Baptist, Luke 1, 13, and Jesus 1, 21. Now, it says here in his name is Jesus. That's remarkable. I'm going to take you somewhere right now. You need to if you buy a brand new Bible, I don't care what the Bible says. To check to see if your Bible is a King James Bible, Acts 7.45. And I have seen King James Bibles with this one messed up. Acts 7.45. And even if your King James Bible does not quote this verse properly, you don't have a King James Bible. His name shall be Jesus, it said, which also our fathers that came after brought in with Jesus into the possession of the Gentiles whom God drive out before the face of our fathers unto the days of David. Anybody recognize that, that story? That man that you're reading about, that Jesus, is Joshua. He's the one that brought the Israelites into the land of Canaan. But the Bible made a mistake and said Jesus. And there are some King James Bibles out there that will rightly fix it for you and tell you it's Joshua. I don't know what we're going to do. Just close our Bibles and go home. Verily, verily. Hebrews 4.8. Let's see if we can fix the Bible here. Get it right. Gotta be a mistake somewhere. I King James Bible says Joshua. You need to go get another one. In Hebrews 4 8, the Bible says. For if Jesus had given them rest, 
Then would he not afterwards have spoken of another day. Well, you read verses 1 through 8, that's the Old Testament. But there's Jesus again. Supposed to be Joshua. I guess Joshua is so much the type of Jesus Christ that in the New Testament his name is called Jesus. I guess. I guess when you go from the Hebrew to Greek, Joshua and Jesus are the same. Now, Jesus means salvation of Jehovah. Joshua means Jehovah saves. It's the same. Jesus is going to bring the Jews into their land after the seven year tribulation period. The judgment of the nations, then the millennium. He's going to bring them in the same pathway that Joshua did. This time they're, they're, going, to, they're going to get the land that belongs to them fully with a king and a prince. So when you read the life of Joshua, Jesus never lost anything. But Joshua in his life only lost one war, and that really was not his fault. Now Joshua did not pray at times either, so that's where you got you know, no type goes 100%. Jesus prayed all the time. You know, Joshua told the, the, the men of Israel to carry 12 stones out of the river. And Jesus, Jesus and Joshua carried the 12 stones into the river. And we believe that's where John the Baptist was standing. When he's baptized, and when the Pharisees, all that. And, and something funny how, how John the Baptist said, and God's able to raise these sons up to be, the, well, this happened to have been 12 stones maybe sitting there for the 12 tribes. And Joshua obeyed Moses all the way. And we see Joshua from a young man growing all the way up to the leader of the nation as we see Jesus. Joshua was a captain. So was Jesus Christ. Study Joshua sometime. And you'll see Jesus Christ. You know, he was one of the two spies that got into the promised land when nobody else went in. He was one of the ones that said, let's go get them. Let's go get them giants. Kick them in the, in the legs and knock them down and kill them. You know who else killed a giant? Type of, day, type of Jesus Christ? David did. You know, Joshua's counterpart with a man, Caleb. Nine, I think he was 90 years old. He went up there, I'll go get them guys. Let me get my teeth first. I'll get you. And beat some butt. Verse 32. In Luke 1. He shall be great. And shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father, David. All right. Now here we go. Some more here. Interesting facts we need to look at. Break this down. 
He is Jesus. Great. 2,000 years and still on the lips of men. Naming the Pharaoh that was giving Israel the hard time in the book of Exodus. Name the construction foreman of the Tower of Babel. Come on. What was at least one name of one of Adam's daughters? How many people have been saved by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that will be in glory with us in New Jerusalem? You want to dare count them? How many hymns that are not even recorded in hymnals and poems that have not been put to music have been written about the Lord Jesus Christ? Another verse here, let's see, John, uh, I think, I always, this one I always forget, and I think the last chapter of John, if not, it's somewhere in John, one of the verses I need to memorize, I keep quoting it, and, oh, John, X. Uh, John 21, 25, there must be another verse that I try to quote and I can't. Watch this about how great Jesus is. And there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which, if they should be written every one, I suppose, John saying, that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. You know, we only get a tidbit of what happened in Jesus' life. What happened to Jesus when he went to Mount of Olives to fall asleep? And he spent all night in prayer. I mean, I don't know. I, I think weird sometimes. Can you imagine little, little Ann saying, come here, guys, come here, come here, come here. There he is. There's the one that created us. Look at him. I mean, when he prayed in the garden, there's a hymn that we sing. Even the birds hush their singing in the garden. We only told a few about the leprosy. We only told a few about the devil. We're told a few about you know the, the arms that are shriveled up. We're told a few about healing the blood. You know, I guarantee we're not told the whole full story from the night that Jesus was arrested all the way to his resurrection. You know, we're not told completely what he did in hell. We're not told of what the dying thief thought when he saw Jesus come. What about from birth to 12 years old? What did he do? What did he do from 12 years old to 30 years old? How many other times did, did Jesus just really get mad at Peter in that mouth of his? I mean, Jesus got mad. How many other times did, did Jesus, so great he is, he put the Pharisees down and just made them just shut up? You think this is the only times that what we read that the accounts? John says the whole world, you couldn't build a library. But while all the things that Jesus did in 33 and a half years. Son is in capital S. We saved people are called the sons of God. But Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Highest. Highest. There is an heavenly order. Ephesians 5.23. 
the proper order of life, Ephesians 5.23. And if you break this, you have this order. Ephesians 5.23. You are broken. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. The children show up in 6 1. The employer or employee shows up in 6 5. The employer shows up in 6 7. If Jesus Christ is not ahead of your family, you're broken. If your wife is ahead of Jesus, you're broken. If your children are ahead of Jesus, you're broken. If your job is more important than your children, you are broken. To get ahead to be the, the, the owner or, the, or the, the manager of the company, more than loving your wife, you are broken. And that's what the Bible says. Jesus Christ has to be the head of your family, the head of your life. Imagine those who are not, who have rejected him. Now I said, Father David, look at Matthew 1.1. 1, 1. Matthew 1.1 1, 1 for his father David. It's kind of funny. The book of generations of Jesus Christ, the son of David. The son of Abraham. David was not his father. Joseph was not his father. God was his father. Now you want to know how many great, 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 greats his grandfather that David was to Jesus Christ? Check out two, count the names, three, four, five, verses six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, verses thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Count the names. And I will tell you that uh, between Matthew 1 8, Matthew verse 1 8, and Asa begat Joseph at, and Joseph at begat Joram, and Joram begat Ozias. There are three kings missing in there. So you got to add three more greats to chapter 1. So back to Luke 1, verse 32. When you read your Bible and it says, Father, his father David, it can be a grandfather. And that will solve a lot of your contradictions in the Bible. You know what I mean? Joseph was called the father of Jesus, and he wasn't the father of Jesus. He was the adopted father. The thrones that the Jews wanted Jesus to take now, without faith, to destroy Rome. But this will happen in the second advent. Not going to happen now. He's the suffering Messiah now. He'll be yet the victorious Messiah yet to come. Now, about the throne of David. This throne that is going to be given to Jesus Christ is a literal throne that he is going to sit. Where is it? Well, I don't know if it's actually going to be David's throne. I mean, where David sat. I believe it's going to be a throne by Jesus Christ in the order that you find David showing up in both Matthew 1 and Luke 3, the genealogy. David as the king. Jesus Christ will be king as in the family of David. The line of Joseph, Matthew chapter 1. The sure mercies of David. Psalms 132 about this throne. 
Psalm 132. Looking at the throne of David. You better love the Jews. Because they are God's people. Jesus Christ. Psalm 132. Lord, remember David and all his afflictions. How he swore unto the Lord and vowed unto the mighty God of Jacob. Surely I will not come into thy tabernacle of my house, nor go up unto my bed. I will not give sleep to my eyes, nor slumber to my eyelids. Until I find out a place for the Lord and habitation for the mighty God of Jacob, a place to put the temple in Jerusalem. Lo, we heard of it in Ephrathah, we found it in the fields of the wood. We will go into his tabernacle, we will worship at his feet. Arise, O Lord, unto thy rest, a thou and the, and the ark of thy strength. The ark is gone. He's sitting down right now. Let thy priests be clothed with righteousness. There is no priest today right now. And let thy saints shout for joy. For thy servant David's sake, turn not away the face of thy anointed. The Lord has sworn in truth unto David. He will not turn from him. Of the fruit of thy body, I will set upon thy throne. Jesus Christ, if thy children will keep my covenant and my testimony that I shall teach them, their children shall also sit upon the, thy throne forevermore. And they don't. For the Lord has chosen Zion as he desired it for his habitation. This is my rest forever. Here will I dwell, for I have desired it. I will abundantly bless her provision. I will satisfy her poor with bread, poor in the millennium. Remember we talked about poor people the other night? I will also clothe her priests with salvation. There's no priest yet. And her saints shall shout, for, shout aloud for joy. Let's repeat it. There will I make the horn strength of David to bud, flower. I have ordained a lamp for my anointed, light. His enemies will I clothe with shame, they're cast into the lake of fire. But upon himself shall his crown flourish. Isaiah 9, 6 and 7. Isaiah 9, 6 and 7. And we read this about the birth. For unto us a child is born. You know, I can just imagine too, and you don't have to take this. This, this is my two cents plus tax. Can you imagine Mary going to synagogue and having this verse read to her before the angel came to her? Have you ever read scripture and have God answer something that day, that week or something? Have you ever had the scripture come alive at that point in your life that, wow, I just read that and that's what and now the preacher's preaching about it. You don't have to believe that, but for, uh, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. We talked about that in verse 31. And the government shall be upon this soldier. Jewish government, Roman government, shall be upon his shoulders. His name shall be called Wonderful. To me it is, not to the Jews. Counselor, I seek him for counsel. The mighty God. Jehovah Witnesses don't call him that. I do. The Everlasting Father. The Pope's take that title. The Prince of Peace. There's a Catholic Church over there in the, in the next uh, city called the Prince of Peace. How dare they take the name of Jesus and worship Mary and have Jesus as, as uh, cookies and milk? 
of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end upon the throne of David upon his kingdom Jesus kingdom to order it to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth for and from hence from henceforth ever forever the zeal of the host will perform this that's a lot for a child being born and I mean uh, for a child being born and a son being given now don't you see what the problem is you see that period at the end of Prince of Peace verse 6 that period is the church age. Verse 7 hasn't happened yet. They wanted verse 7 to happen. But it wasn't his. What the Bible keeps saying. Wasn't his time. Wasn't his time. Wasn't his time. Chapter 16 verse 5. 16 5. But the throne of David and in mercy shall the throne be established and he shall sit upon it in truth in the tabernacle of David judging and seeking judgment and hastening righteousness Jeremiah 23 5 Jeremiah 23 5 Behold the days come saith the Lord it hasn't happened yet I will raise unto David a righteous capital B branch hmm. And what was the last name of the lawyer in the TV program? He said he knows the Bible. And king shall reign and prosper and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. That's the throne of David we're looking at. Verse 6. In his days, Judah shall be saved. Israel shall dwell safely. That's not today. That's what the Jews wanted. And this is his name whereby he shall be called. The Lord our righteousness. What did they call him in capital letters? Jesus, the King of the Jews. He wasn't called the Lord our righteousness. His blood be upon us and our children. That's what that was. Jeremiah 33:15. Jeremiah 33 15 in those days and at that time will I cause the branch of righteousness to grow up unto David and he shall execute judgment and righteousness in a, uh, wasn't there somebody that had a branch that budded how about that and I think flowered when it was dead it was resurrected I think they put it in the tabernacle. I mean, that was afterwards. But before it, before it blossomed, they put it in the in the in the tabernacle. And afterwards, it blossomed and keep it in the ark. Daniel two forty four. Daniel two forty four. This is about the this is about the throne of David being Jesus' throne. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up his kingdom, which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms. It shall stand forever. How about that? 
How about that? How about 7.13? Daniel 7.13. You know in America, there's a king coming, and I want him. I don't want to vote for a president. I want the king. You can stick your president and your taxes and all your problems. I want the king, and I will go out there and try to get others to come to the G to the king. And Daniel 7.13, and I saw the night visions, and behold, one like the sun of of man capital S come with the clouds of heaven and came to the ancient of days God and they brought him near before him there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people nations languages should serve him his dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed How's that? One last place. Hebrews 1 8. Hebrews 1 8. Not only is he going to get the throne of David, when you go back and search the scripture, he's going to get a throne that will last forever and ever. And I believe there is a wonderful, grateful music of classical. He reigneth forever and ever. Handles Messiah. A lot better than this junky contemporary music. That doesn't even mention Jesus Christ. Hebrews 1.8 But unto the Son, capital S, He saith. This is what God says to the Son. Read this to Jehovah Witness. Thy throne, O God. Uh-oh. He says to the Son. God speaking to the Son. Thy throne, O God. God called the Son God. And a bunch of idiots down the road say, no, he's not God. Who are you going to believe? Okay. Is forever and ever, where do we read that? A scepter... It's a king's throne, I mean king's uh, rod, of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Jesus Christ did not get the kingdom when he came the first time. Oh, brother, he's coming back the, the, the second time and will get it. We'll read one more verse in Luke 133. This one's self-explanatory. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, what we read, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. And that's exactly what we just read. Now again, let me just say one last closing. I mean, I, I, I know somehow, I know some things how God works. And I can just assume, and I can be wrong, maybe I need to confess it as a sin and put it under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't have to take it. But I can just see Mary going to synagogue before this angel shows up and those books were open. Didn't Jesus walk in the synagogue and the roll was handed to him and he opened up the place in Isaiah and, and began to read and stop and said, in your eyes right now, you, you are beholden. The scriptures have fulfilled. You know? It's a wonderful thing to have the God of the Bible, not man of dirt. 